Good morning, it's beginning of week four, it's flying by. Going a bit quicker than I expected, but filming also takes a long time. Right, so I think what I'm going to do today is I'm down to my last full board, and I know that's got to do the front for the shower, and then I got lots of offcuts. I've still got two wall cabinets to do, I've got the end and back panel of the kitchen frontals to do, and then it's just doors. So I'm pretty confident with what I got, I got enough to do it all, but to play it safe, what I'm going to do is do all the main parts first. So I'm going to make and dry fit the other two wall cabinets as i said before i don't want them to actually go in yet but i figured if i make them and put them to, to the side at least i know then that that wood's been secured for those and then all i'm gonna have left is the doors to do i'm gonna do the wall cabinet for up here the one that goes above the kitchen and then get them done and then i think i'll also on the last full piece i'm just gonna roughly cut the shower bathroom frontal and then I know then all the off cuts are for doors got some ply coming today which is great I've also got a lot of deliveries coming sort of today and tomorrow so there's some stuff now to really sort of get stuck into this another job that's desperate to be done is let's get these sides of these walls done in the garage I've also ordered rubber penny flooring for the garage still haven't chosen anything yet for the main part but we'll get that decided upon i think that's something i can leave right to the end because charles like fit it first and i'm like well if i fit it yes it's easier because i can go side to side in the van and i ain't got to cut all around the cabinets but you're in and out all the time with wood and it's like the shower end panels they are floor to ceiling so it'd be so easy to just cut into that flooring as you're bringing them in i'm not gonna bore you with cutting these wall cabinets i'm gonna get the two wall cabinets done and i'll show you afterwards so i got the first one done this is the one that's going up the bed and that's the base bottom part for it and you might hear some banging i got me a little apprentice today <laughs> you know what i love yeah i've got our make our make <laughs> gotta do one of these knock on trims right let's check it out Come on, let's be honest now. You've had me cutting out the whole thing. I've measured it, you know, hmm. it's been scribed, it's been sanded. We've also put the router on and then we filled let's the Let's not engine. put the corner of the board though on the beer wood. Oh yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, I think it's uh, pretty neat actually. So where's this one going, love? This is the cupboard fascia for above the kitchen. All oh, right, fair enough, yeah it is. But to be fair, you did take me in there and help me hold it there, so. This is the front now for the kitchen one. They're all around 300 mil high. In fact, they are all, they're all 300 mil high, so it's nice. They're even all throughout the van. I'm just doing different depths depending on where they are. So like the one at the end of the bed, I've done quite deep because it's out of the way. Whereas the one above the kitchen, I'll do a little bit shallower, the same as the one above the bench, so you don't knock your head on it. Now this face is done, we'll put this to one side and we're gonna do the base. What do you think, love? I think I've done a cracking job so far, to be honest. Right, come on then, let's do the base. The bottom of the Yeah, cabinet. the bottom part of it. Yeah, where's the wood for it then? You tell me. Well, I thought it was down there, but you've been shuffling things around. Let's <laughs> face it, it's in a bit of a tip over there now. It was looking lovely yeah. the other day. It was, well, as I showed you and earlier. Now. All our off cuts are there, but that's for like doors and end panels, so we'll find a piece that'll be good for the bottom. Now. Yeah, so it wasn't me being stupid, was it? Let's face it. I'm thirsty. You want another cup of season here? Four. I made him a bacon bat this morning. It was about five or six thick rashers in there. Lumped it in. Loads that's why my butter. mouth is so dry, yeah. Right, back to work. <laughs> Brew time, babe. You gonna take a break? <laughs> What's in these posh mugs? Well, I got them because they got lids on them so you don't get your wood wood dust in your tea. Oh, I like it. Isn't it? <laughs> so, you know, you can't, you can't have a builder's brew without having a proper lid on it. See, look at that, no dust. Happy with that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> she can come again. Okay, it's been a couple of hours. Um, we've been quite productive so far today. We've got a wall unit here that's ready for the kitchen area. We got the wall unit here and that's for the end of the bed up here. And I've done the seat base, so I've got also hinges just to put in between that fixed point at the rear. If you remember, there's a strip here that'll be hinged onto there. And I've made a start on the shower. We've done the boards, but here 
and I've also started tanking. Now tanking is something that's used in wet rooms and it's a waterproofing sealant system that just needs to be done on any camper van. I can guarantee you that any camper van that's been built like this without the tanking kit is either A leaking and you don't know about it or it's leaked and you know about it or it's gonna leak very soon. When you do tanking, what you need to do is you need to do a primer over all the internal walls and floor of the shower. I buy a kit from Screwfix. It's a map A, I think it's called a shower waterproofing kit. I'll show you in a minute. And that comes with an SBR primer. So you just go around, you prime it all, leave that soak in for about an hour or so until that's nice and dry. Then you can get on to your tanking. Now the tanking comprises of this mixture and this tape so this tape's got netting on the side and then this rubber like it's not bitumen but it's like a rubber strip in the middle and what you're doing is you're focusing the areas that are liable to leak in so we're looking at all the joints where there's joints in wood so we're looking at all the bottom corners all the way around and I'll do the front when the front panel is on and then we're also going to look at the corners and that will eventually run all the way up to the ceiling on both sides and I'll also again do the fronts when the front is on now I've done this in two pieces it was just easier and there was no reason why I didn't have to so I'll also run some along this one and also on the ply going across there where that was also done in two pieces and to do tanking all you do with a nice big brush is do a thin coat of this to start with and let that dry and then after a couple of hours I'll come back with this tape and because I'm doing you can just see now I've actually run some all up here and I'm just about to do a section to come down here what you're gonna do is you're gonna repaint it quite thick get your tape on and then I use like a flat edge get it in nice and tight into the corners and then when it's all sat nice just go back over it all with a brush and a bit more of the tanking kit and I'll, again I'll let all that dry and then they'll have one more coat so I do a total of three coats I do a base coat the coat that I use when I'm putting the tape on and then I'll do a third one and this is just gonna seal this room before I've even put in my waterproof clad in you know and it's got silicon seals around the tray and again even with the silicon around the tray I actually always double seal so when the tray goes in I will seal between the tray and the tank in all the way around then I'll install the clad in and then I'll seal between the cladding and the tray again. So we've got two lots of silicon, one lot of tanking, this thing ain't leaking at all. And it is as simple as that. Now, one thing I did forget to tell you is do your corners first before you do your side strips and the back strip. So you do your corners, then your side, your bottom strips, and then your verticals. So I'm gonna crack on, get this done, and then we'll move on to the next job. Morning guys, so it's Tuesday today. Didn't do a lot of recording yesterday. It was more of a hands-on day and just getting some bits done and dusted. So we've had quite a lot of stuff arrive. So I'll show you what we've got and then I'll show you what we've done. We've picked up the shower. Now, this is on a riser kit like you'd have in a house with a thermostatic bar. And it's quite low profile, that's not too bad. So that's here, all the cladding for the shower room is here. And we've got the diesel litres arrived. That's the penny rubber flooring for in the garage. We got some carpet mat in here, that's for the front of the cab. Also, my piggyback fuse has arrived, so I finally got the right size that will connect my ignition live that goes to the DC to DC. So that's been fitted, tested, that's good. The USB port for this panel has arrived, that's all in. Also, the fixing kit is here, so that's just sat there ready to be fitted. I've shown you the lid's been done for this. I have got the hinges so that's ready then again to be fitted and then the big one so you saw me yesterday starting on the shower and this is where we're at so that's looking pretty cool right it's a bit dark here so i'll try and help with the torch so i've got the first layer of tanking in 
but this front panel here has only gone in today so I have still got all this side to do we've got the pipes in ready to receive the thermostatic bar and I've cored out the hole already for the waste and I've also done the light switch for the bathroom and a 12 volt cigarette lighter there I just figured that if someone wants a TV in the back then at least there's a 12 volt socket there that they can use or if they want to change it to another USB they can but bearing in mind they are having USB lights here and on the other side they've also arrived so they're ready for fitting all the LED strips for under the wall units have arrived and strips now I built there was something else I did oh this bench is quite comfy so there was something else I built end of last week and I don't know if I showed you guys I know I showed you the plan for building it but I have done as well the frontal for the kitchen reason I didn't go any further with that was I wanted to do all the main furniture like the front of this and all the wall units because it's starting to get a bit low and I didn't want to sort of build all of this and be like oh well, I'm going to have to do the front of the shower now so it's like right let's do all the main pieces first see what I got left over assign some doors and then we can build the kitchen out of the rest because I like building it all out of the lightweight ply it's nice to work with good thickness but obviously lightweight so the only thing that hasn't arrived yet is the waste trap for the shower tray so as soon as I year I can get that fitted get that drop down on a bed of silicon I don't know what to do with the shower door yet I've kept the original cut out so I'm thinking I might use that as a door and hinge it and get a handle on it I think that might be quite nice or do I leave it open and put a shower curtain across I mean it's gonna have a shower curtain anyway I could put a tambour door in it but I'm not gonna put a tambour door in it you know they're quite expensive and this fan is about you know keeping some of the costs down but again it's something that can be added very easily later on if someone wants to so I think yeah everything on the van is very upgradable everything's been say ready for those little upgrades if people want it but this is where we are currently at I've got the two wall units built. This is the one now that can go up there. It couldn't go on till that end panel was on. Now that's on and all done, that wall unit can go on. This is the one to go above the kitchen. But again, I want to get the kitchen sorted before that goes in because I don't want to restrict my movement. I've got the plywood to do the sides of these got my pipe that's going up to the shower I've got the water pump here and just need to get the expansion expansion vessel and believe it or not I still haven't actually bought water tanks so I do need to find some water tanks for undermount I want to get a nice fresh water and a waste water tank and then we can get all that in and plumbed in so for now we're gonna crack on get these wall unit that wall unit up and then I might do some more work in the garage you know it'd be nice to see that move a little bit now get the sides cladded carpeted get the penny flooring down and I think that's going to transform that quite a lot all right guys coming towards the end of the day on Tuesday and I'm going to give you an update on what we've done I've got the two bed lights in these are like flexible heads and they're working and then they got USB chargers underneath I don't know if I showed you the wall unit up I know I told you I was going to do it but that's done with the end panel and I think this turned out quite nice so this is the little side panel that's all fully fitted got the light switch for up here water pump this is a USB and I got it with a cover to hide that blue light because I know I know how annoying they can be and that's the diesel heater controls and these are like the concealed screw caps I was on about so that's all done that's all wired into the 12 volt fuse box I just haven't put fuses in them yet so I think what I might do is just do the LED strip for up here so that's another job done and then we're going to jump onto the garage before the day's out all I'm going to do is get the penny flooring like it's like a rubber mat down there's a storm apparently coming tomorrow and I don't fancy doing that in the rain so I think get that done that's done by there and then hopefully I'll be able to do stuff either in the workshop or locked inside the van because apparently we got some big winds and rain coming so I'm not looking forward to it let's get this light strip up and then we can get on that garage we got the light installed under the wall unit so voila and then I said I was gonna lay that rubber mat into the garage because then I could get the fridge in and I opened it up and it was actually anthracite carpet that I've ordered for the back doors but just to add a little bit of you know salt in the wound that happened to be in the rubber matting <laughs> or a leaflet for rubber matting 
crazy right it's about six o'clock now so i'm going to call it a day today guys and we'll pick up in the morning now i haven't got that floor in i need the floor in for the garage i need the waste trap for the shower tray so that can't go in and i can't clad that until that tray's in so i could clad the sides of the garage and we got the kitchen to build have a good night see you in the morning guys morning guys it's wednesday today fill up a bit of a cold thank you Charles. and we're gonna focus on the kitchen today we've got a storm coming in so i just want to do what i can inside it's all right out there at the moment but it's coming this is the kitchen frontal that i've built as i've said before i like it all to be in one piece and then i build behind it i've got a second piece ready here and that's got an edge in trim so this is where the sliding door side is so that's going to come up to this side i'll overlap it by 20 mils so that the doors then that go on the front of this this i like to go past the doors so we're going to do that and i realized i haven't actually shown you what is actually going into this kitchen so this is going to be a drawer so just a cut through tray drawer i've done it quite low because there's going to be a hob above here this is the oven again i try i like to get it as high up as i can because you don't want to be bending all the way down and then what i'm hoping to do here in this space i haven't designed it yet but i want it to be like um kind of like a drawer but it's got a lid on it which you've got a removable lid but that lid i need to get it on like some sort of caster rollers because i want it to be used as a step up into the bed this is a 200 wide cupboard Although the opening's 200 wide, it'll actually be about 250 inside, and we'll get a shelf in there as well. And then this will be the sink unit. So this is 500 wide, but again, with the side on it, it's actually 550. I'll hopefully get a shelf in that, but I won't even try and put one in until all the sinks in. This will be something I'll retrofit afterwards when I can see what space I got. That's today's plan, is to do as much of this as we can and get it actually fixed into the van, which will allow me to fit the last set of wall units. You alright, babe? Yeah, just wondering if you need me today. To be honest with you, the weather's rubbish, so probably not. I think I'm going to just be in here potching with this. So I get a day off? Another day off. <laughs> like I'm, yesterday. I'm always behind the scenes doing stuff. Fetching brews. Cleaning. Making rubbish sandwiches. They were in rubbish sandwiches. She brought me sandwiches at like three o'clock yesterday afternoon. It was half past two. It was half past two. It was nearly three o'clock. Half past two. And yeah, it was too late. It was. I was like, you're gonna spoil my tea if I eat those now. So they got denied. Right, it's lunchtime. Thought I'd give you a little update on what we've got to. Right. So the kitchen section is all in. Done the end panel, back panel. And got the two dividers in because these two are the cupboards and then that over there will be sectional also got the wall unit up and done the back panel got to do an end panel but i can't do that till i've carpeted beer what i'm gonna do next the flooring for the garage has arrived that penny rubber matting i think we'll get that done next because when that's in, that means I can get my fridge in and then I can start looking at water tanks and where are the bits in the garage are going. I think in the garage is going to be, so you've got the fridge. I say water tanks, water tanks are going underneath, but the water will need to come through. So I'm still waiting for the drain on the shower tray, which is annoying because that's all ready to go in and that can be cladded. Still don't know what to do with the wheel arches yet, whether to carpet them or box them in. I think if you box them in you're gonna lose a little bit of space we'll see what we do with that I'm not sure yet but I want to get the flooring done and then get these side panels done on the sides and do a bit of work in the garage because it's looking a little bit deprived right so this rubber flooring I got it off eBay because I noticed a lot of the van conversion sites that were selling it was a little bit overpriced so I bought it on eBay and it's a three mil penny coin rubber flooring matting and I bought a two meter by one and a half. So it's about 1.8 wide and 1400 deep. So perfect fit. I've just put it in. So I've only done a rough cut on it, but I quite like that. I think that's pretty smart. So I said, I just gotta trim all this in proper. Nice Stanley then across the front. And then on the front, I'm gonna put one of them angle trims. But I'm not sure whether, do I staple it down? Do I glue it down? Do I let it just free float? research required but i like that really good so i'm going to crack on with that the winds are starting to pick up a bit now so i think if this storm is coming and i know i keep going on about this bloody storm but that's all the radio is going on about 
So it's like, where is it? Because it's been lovely all morning. This is our is trim. Good job I'm a carpenter and not a carpet fitter because I'm not a great fan of laying carpets, linos, that sort of stuff. But it's in, it's pretty neat. Got it cut in. And I've also got the fridges in. So I've just put that in, wired it up. I've just got to tidy up this cable run. Also did a little protective box on the back. And that's to protect this. Like they got the compressor back there and there was some little copper tube pipes and because it's a garage and there's stuff coming in and out i didn't want it getting hit so nice little protector but a nice big gap on top to allow venting right seven o'clock i best call it a day just received mounting turret and the fuel line thing got some edging and that's going to be for the doors and garage is done not the best of lights let me see if i can help you out no, it's not doing a great deal, but I boarded and carpeted both sides. I'm glad that's done, to be honest. Tight spot. I haven't put the slats in yet because I want to be able to do the doors on the wall unit and I've still got the reveal on the window to sort out. And all I have to do on the end of the garage floor is just a trim then across there. Done and dusted. Oh, knackered. So I think tomorrow's job is, now all the stuff is here for the diesel eater, I think we're gonna get the diesel eater in because it's starting to get colder, hence nice thick jumper. So join us on the next one and we get that in and crack on and get this fan finished.